that I'm doing, uh, focusing on right now, which is attracting youth into out of school time, science learning experiences, can only be done if you focus on STEM interest, because you're asking them to participate on their own, on their own time, um, and they, without thinking about what interests them, it would be very hard to think about designing a program that would attract them. So we've been, um, I've been thinking about STEM interest for a long time, but also related to that, I've been thinking about incentives. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how to attract youth and then how to keep them attracted. What, what will be interesting about that course? So course design and leveraging the assets of the museum and leveraging um, what we know about best, best practices of learning in a museum really come into play. What I've also come to understand about STEM interest is that it's very hard to predict and it's very hard to prescribe. And because we're talking about people, people who are all different from each other, they might all be 16 or 15 or 14, but they are different from each other. What are the conditions for learning in an out of school time setting? And what are the characteristics um, that you put into place knowing that those things might have greater impact than other things. So what we're learning is people, right? The adults in the room matter. And they're not just the, the educators who are teaching them, but the coordinators they're coming into contact with. In our case, the scientists they meet uh, during a guest lecture. Um, but it could also be um, someone like me who I might not really be visible when they're taking the course because I might not have time to go visit the course or teach the course, but I might go in during one of the class days and chat with kids. And it, it could be that I say something that triggers something for them. And I think I've been thinking about that a lot because we take for granted the power that we might bring with us in the words we say to youth and in particular, how that might trigger STEM interest. So I think adults play a big role. Then, not to your surprise, activities play a big role. People want to do um, stuff that's interactive. The opportunity, which is also not a surprise that museums have, is to bring um, objects and artifacts and experiences that are just not replicable in school. The chances for kids to become STEM interested or deepen their STEM interest with authentic materials um, are higher, or with, or with um, technologies that they don't get to access is higher. I also think that topics that connect to them from, from the heart matter. So how, how do we know if we've moved the needle for someone on STEM interest? I, I really don't know 100%, but this is how I do it. I look for whether they are, um, in a survey, they might say like, I told my family about it, my friends about it, or my teachers about it. So if they're telling somebody about it, that, then it's important enough that they want to share about it. So that's an indicator of interest to me. Then when I ask them, well, what is it that you shared? And it's an open-ended, they will give me all kinds of responses. And I code for that. I, I look for what are their sharing um, concepts, whether they're sharing an affect that they experienced, um, and I get both, or whether they're sharing um, something they saw or did, like um, an artifact that they got to experience. Um, and all of those things to me are indicators of interest, but then when I code them, I, I can better think about um, whether, whether their takeaways are more content related or affect related. And for me, then, it becomes a matter of conveying that back to the educators and course design. 